G'day, Stu here from UAV Futures, and today we're going to be checking out this. Uh, what is this, Stuart? What is this contraption you've got there? Now, this is the uh, Tango from TBS, or Team Black Sheep, uh, and it is made for multi-rotors, and it's like a radio that we're going to be using, and it might actually even be rivaling my Tyrannus in terms of my favourite controller. Anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to stick it on the bench, we'll have a look at its features and test it out. Let's get started. Alrighty, so uh, here it is on the bench, and uh, the first thing a lot of people are going to want to know is, Stuart put it side by side next to the Tyrannus so we can see what it looks like. So if I move this to the side, I've got my uh, trusty Tyrannus right here. You can see it is considerably longer across this way. Not quite as tall, uh, but it is definitely a lot wider across that. And a big part of that, I think, is because of the, well, it is because of the FPV screen. Anyway, we'll compare these two a fair bit throughout this review, but let's uh, go back to the Tango and have a closer look. Alrighty, so the first thing uh, people are probably going to notice is this right here. Now, this is your FPV screen, and we'll talk about this a little bit in detail as well, but that is probably one of the best features about this controller, is you can actually see your FPV, FPV feed on this screen. Just a quick overview of the buttons and the actual physical parts of this controller. So, what we've got, you've got your two gimbals just here. Now, this one's set up in mode two. Uh, you've got two three-position switches. One is on this side, and one is on that side. In the, the two switches just here, they're two-position switches. Down here you've got your trims for your uh, two gimbals right there. This part, this up, down and scan, and we'll talk about that when it comes to uh, the, the screen just here. That's for your FPV feed. And on this side you've got this really awesome button. This is actually one of my favourite features of this controller. Just how easy it is to type things in using this button. And that's uh, so you can spin left and right also a button. On the bottom you've got your little power section. So, which is just one long press to turn it on. Uh, and then you've got this awesome port down the bottom, this TBS port, which is fantastic because that does some really, really cool things. Your little charging port. On the top, you can see you actually have two little scroll wheels there. So if you need to scroll or select anything, you can actually do that. And then on the back, we've got a little module. Now this is a JR module, which we'll talk about as well. So any JR module will fit in there. But yeah, so that's a quick overview, but uh, let's have a, let's break it down a little bit and we'll talk about how it feels and we'll probably be comparing it a lot to the Tyrannus and I just, just, I guess, giving it a run through and showing you guys what it's all about. Now, one of the most important things I think when it comes to a radio is how does it feel in your hands and uh, how do the sticks feel because that is where we are we sort of spend most of our time mucking around with these right here and i got to say it feels a bit bigger than the Tyrannus now uh, I don't think it's as easy for a pilot who uses their thumbs look I use my thumbs when I'm flying but I find the Tyrannus uh, sticks are a little bit easier to reach I guess on the maximum inflection right here and something else to note it feels a little bit I guess softer not not smoother but just a little bit more softer on here so the Tyrannus springs when I'm moving those around feel a little bit tighter I guess in terms of how they spring back to the middle this doesn't feel quite I wouldn't say loose uh, they just feel a little bit softer but maybe you can tighten those up now I did a little bit of reading and I really think that the reason that this controller is going to be awesome for those pinching style pilots so the people who pinch the sticks I think they're going to find they this really fits your hand quite well uh, in that sort of strange grip that people tend to have because you can actually get some purchase around the back of the controller back of the radio and uh, really use these sticks very well so if you're a pinching pilot I think this is going to be a dream all the switches up the top they feel pretty much exactly like the Tyrannus switches anyway much for muchness so uh, no need to go into too much detail about those they feel exactly the same uh, one thing I have noted when I'm setting it up in clean flight I'm used to this this being the uh, high position but it's actually I think all the switches as defaults that is the low and you need to actually switch them up uh, to go to high so that took a little bit to get used to for me now before we turn it on uh, what I do want to point out is this part just up here now I've taken the top off just here and this is the little patch antenna that I've got to say it feels like it goes for miles you get fantastic reception with one of these now what I do wish uh, was if they could somehow include a diversity in here but that is where your antenna is kept for your FPV feed so when you are flying it is important to note that sort of you have the back of the controller facing where you're flying because if you're flying around behind you you're probably going if you're using this for reception anyway you're probably going to uh, lose some video feed but if you keep this if you keep flying in front of you this thing I got to say absolutely rocks a really really I wish I could get reception like this just off my goggles this thing gets such better reception than my fat shark goggles alrighty so let's uh, turn it on and uh, have a look at the radio just one long press turns it on and I might turn out some of these lights actually make it a little bit easier to see 
Alrighty, so I've turned the lights out just here, but this is why I love this button right here. You can scroll back and forth and you can uh, sort of go through all those things so much easier than pushing up and down. So what I want to do, I'm just going to go back. So notice how the screen dims when the actual menu is on so you can see the writing. But let's have a look uh, at how easy it is. So this is some of our menus just here. If you want to put drone just here, now that is all about what model you're going to have. So instead of saying model on the Tyrannus, you've got drone. Now I've got two in here. I've got my mini owl and my RS90, but check this out. This is how easy it is to put something in. So you can just simply scroll through. I don't have to push that button a, a million times. Uh, so I find it a lot easier. Uh, UAV, there we go, I can spell. A lot easier to go through and put the name in. I really, really like that. It's so much easier than uh, just simply scrolling all the time and pushing those buttons, because that really drives me insane. All right, now this feature right here, this is extremely important, and this is one of what I think one is the best features of, uh, of this radio because it makes setting things up so easy. So simply you go into type and you collect what sort of model you're going to be flying with. So if it's something in DJR or 3DR, uh, or if you're just going to be using clean flight. And basically what this does, you don't need to muck around with the mapping of any of the channels. Uh, it will just work on, so whatever the defaults, if you select clean flight, this will map itself so the sticks relate and the buttons relate perfectly to whatever the default is of clean flight but it would change if you selected dji it would change up the channel mapping to match dji and things like that so uh it is really really cool that you don't have to worry about that channel mapping it just takes one more part out of the equation when you're setting up your quad it is simply almost like plug and play so i really really like that feature and i think it's going to save a lot of people some headaches I'm just going to add this little freeze frame in here because I do want to add that it also depends on what type of module you select uh, to put in the back. But we'll cover that as well in a little bit in the review. Um, and then we can obviously just save there if we went back. I'm not going to, I'm going to discard the changes because I don't need that random UAV model. Now, if we go into remote, this is all about, I guess, setting up the actual controls on here. So you can select what sort of mode it is, what module, <coughs> excuse me, what module you're going to be putting in the back. So in here, this is you just select if whatever JR mod you're going to be putting in the back. So I'm using, usually I use a PPM one, but I've also got a Crossfire. Or if you want to put in a specific brand, uh, you can actually choose one of those on here and it will make sure everything works with the default. Going back, uh, this idle warning, I wonder if, oh, hang on. Uh, that's probably, that's just like your timer. Maybe I should turn that on because I don't want to, there we go. I'm going to turn mine on for five minutes. In the home channel, what that is, that is basically just what you want this to turn on to when you first turn your radio on. Now, a bit of a little sneaky feature right here, uh, depending on which country you live in and what laws you have. Uh, say here you've got all your standard sort of channel, you've got your bands and your channels, but you can actually go right down to this channel right here, 5584, and that is pretty low. So if you're in a country where it's legal to fly around on that, you'd be getting almost zero interference with anyone around you because this thing is so far removed from any of the other channels out there. So if you're uh, feeling a little bit sneaky, I'm not condoning any of this, but uh, you're going to get almost zero interference from other pilots when you're flying around on this channel right here. Hint, hint. Now if we go down and we look at the display, that's all about this, this part here. So you can adjust your contrast, your brightness, your hue, or you can even just turn off your display. And if you do that, once it's off, you actually need to power cycle the remote to get the screen to come back on. Anyway, I'm going to go back because we want to leave that on here. And let's go exit. Alrighty, so now I'm just going to plug my little uh, mini owl I've got just in here, and I don't actually know what channel that is actually on, so let's uh, plug that in. It might be on the default right there. Uh, let's see, how's that looking? Do, do, do. Oh, look at that. Terrible, terrible sight. Sorry, guys. Uh, but let's just pretend, <coughs> excuse me, pretend we were on a different channel. I think if you hit scan, it cycles through it through it all till it finds it. Now, this is probably not going to work so well because it is right next door. Let's, uh, I'm going to take the mini owl out to another room and then we'll hit scan and see what happens. Radio. so what I actually did, uh, instead of using my mini owl, because I'm not sure what channels that's on, so that's not going to be a good test. I have my Atom V2 plugged in and uh, from Rotorex, but what we ought to do, we're about to, uh, we will be able to scan that channel because I know I'm on 5820 for that. So let's uh, scan through and see how we go. Oh, 5840, we should be on. So, <coughs> so in that situation, it went past it. <coughs> let's have another scan. Just start it randomly and see how we go. Right, 5805 and 5828. No, that's not it. So, yeah, it seems to be going past uh, the scanning function, past sort of where you need to. But if you do need to manually go up and down, you can just press these buttons here to cycle through all the channels.
So uh, there we go. That's the one my Adam is actually on. That's Charlie sitting there. He doesn't really like the quads when they're not flying around. Now, uh, something that is worth pointing out, and I don't know if it's a good thing or if it's a bad thing, uh, is that you can't actually adjust any of the curves or the throttle curves or the rate curves or anything like that in the radio. And I actually spoke to Trappy at Team Black Sheep about that. And the reasoning behind that is that uh, when you adjust sort of the throttle curve on the radio, you, you lose a lot of resolution. So you're much better off adjusting the throttle curve in the flight controller compared to on the actual radio itself. So that's why he said that this radio does that. There is the option though, <coughs> In, uh, in one of the settings because uh, I don't know what sort of type of flight controller or what configuration that it runs. Not with clean flight or anything like that, but there is some other bizarre one where you can't actually adjust that stuff in the flight controller and it needs to be done on the radio. So Trappy said for that type of model that's selected in here, you can actually change it on here. But for most things, uh, you will find you won't be able to say adjust your throttle curve or your rates or anything like that on here. It will all have to be done on the flight controller. And to be honest, that's better practice anyway. That's where you should be making all your adjustments. You should be leaving the radio as default or stock as you can. Now, speaking of the modules, you can stick anything you like in the back. So, uh, if you're going to, like, say so you're rocking some Freeze Guy stuff, or you're going to be putting in an uh, Orange RX module, or a TBS module, all you simply have to do is slide it into the back. <laughs> there we go. And that is how easy that is to set up. So, this would be good to go uh, if I have my correct radio bound to that. Now binding is super easy. Uh, all you'd have to do because there's no because there's no internal module or anything like that. All you'd have to do is you put in your module, and most of them have a little button that you would hold down uh, when you actually power on your radio. So that is how to boot up with bind mode. Uh, and another thing that brings me over to this port just here. Now this is probably one of my favourite features of this whole controller. Alrighty, so uh, this bottom port I think I absolutely love because what actually happens is you get one of these pins just here. This is like an 8 pin connector. It slides in, it locks in place so it's not going to get ripped out if someone bumps it or something. But, 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 this is the cool part. On the other end, right here, it's a fairly long cable. I don't know if it needs to be this long, but I guess it's better than being too short. You have these two plugs right here. One is all your FPV goodness and one is the same plug for your fat shot or your goggles or something like that. So if I wanted to power my Fat Shark goggles, I can do that. And if I want to get the uh, the video feed from this receiver, I can simply plug that in as well. So no longer do I need a separate receiver. And it really brings this to life because uh, these are some old Attitude V2s and they only get the eight, eight channels or something like that. So there's no way that these things could traditionally pick up race band. But with one of these and using the internal receiver right here, it opens up a whole new sort of functionality to these goggles because I no longer need a ground station or anything like that to be picking up race band. So uh, with this bad boy right here, I can power my goggles. Uh, it makes things lighter hanging off my face because I don't have to carry a battery and uh, I can get race band. So really, really good job there. I think that is fantastic. Let's give that a little test actually. So uh, look, now what I've done, I've plugged it in and this is on a band that I wouldn't be able to get on my normal Fat Sharks. And I don't know how well you guys are going to see this, but you can definitely see, uh, I'll see it. And it's not really gonna work. It's, this is very hard to show you, but trust me, when I'm putting these on my face, I can see a nice clear picture in here uh, that is coming, <coughs> excuse me, straight from this feed right here. So I absolutely love that feature. I think that is one of the best features about this radio. Actually, something we should test, let's turn the screen off and see if we can have the screen off but still get our feed in here. So I think you hold this down, display, turn off. There we go, let's see. Yep, so you can turn the display off while still having the picture in here. So that is great to see. Now a few little stats here, so it's a 4.2 inch LCD 480p sort of screen on the front, so you've got your 40 channel 5.8 gigahertz receiver, but this part here uh, I do sort of wonder about because on the battery we've got two different things, but on the back here it says we've got a 6000 milliamp uh, sort of 3.6 volt battery and it is not a LiPo, it's the same sort of batteries that get put in your laptop, so you can charge it up, charge it down, whatever, it doesn't really matter, a very very durable battery, but on the packet when uh, I have a look right here, it says we have a 6,400 milliamp hour battery. So it's really hard for me to tell what size the battery is in here. Is it 6,000? Is it 6,400? But regardless, it is still a very decent sized battery that is in here. And I think you get, look, don't quote me on this, but about eight hours of flying if you don't have the screen on. And if you do have the screen on and you're rocking that, you're probably going to be getting about four hours of flight time with the screen on as well. 
But what I do have to wonder is how easy is it to replace the battery or where, is, where even is the battery in this thing? Because I know on the back of the Tyrannus, uh, it is super easy just to open this up. Well, actually it's not easy. I find these batteries annoying to try and fit in there. Anyone who's opened these up and tried to squish their battery back in will know just how frustrating these ones can be. But at least you can replace these batteries. I wonder how that's going to be on the uh, Tango. Now let's talk about some things I wish this had to make it just a little bit better. Now number one, and this is the biggest thing I wish that would happen is just put a little DVR thing in here. I don't know how much a DVR costs, but if there was just a little spot where you could put your SD card or your micro SD card in here to record your footage from here, that would be brilliant because I know a lot of people out there, especially if you're using this for like an upgrade for the Attitude V2s or something that doesn't have such a good receiver like this, a 40 channel receiver, uh, those goggles don't have DVR as well. So this thing could kill two birds with one stone. It could become your 40 channel receiver and it could also put your DVR in there. So that would make this thing fantastic. Pretty much bump the Attitude V2 up to the Attitude V3s. So uh, the guys over at Team Black Sheep, if you can put a little DVR recorder in here, that would be like, that would make it the bee's knees. Now another thing, uh, I know uh, there was a discussion that I had about adjusting the throttle curves and stuff like that. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm all about giving people options and uh, letting people sort of, if they want to adjust it on the radio, I think they should be able to. Maybe instead of just disabling that feature, it'd be great if it just said, do you really want to do this? It's much better to do this in the flight controller or just something like that. At least give people that option or a little bit of warning because I hate being locked out of features that uh, even if they're not good features, they're still handy to have maybe to someone in some situation. For example, maybe you're out flying and uh, say you've taken your quads away but your computer's run out of battery and so you have no way of adjusting your flight controller. Uh, it'd be great to be able to, even if you could do it on your radio, you could do something. Just there might be some situations where it might come in handy. Uh, another thing, and this, this wouldn't be, this would be just an improvement. I don't know how feasible <coughs> this one would be. But if there was a HDMI input into this, that would be brilliant because then you could hook this up uh, to some, I guess, you imagine playing. Look, this is like a bit of a dream and I, I have no idea about the logistics. But imagine just mucking around playing FPV Freerider on this screen uh, using this controller. That would be a total blast. So that would be, look, I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's that would almost be impossible. But uh, using this thing to play some things on this screen would be amazing, especially if it's FPV related. And then the last thing uh, that I think people need to get used to is this thing is pretty big so uh you really need to think about how you're going to pack this in your case when you're carrying it around and look that's not it's not really a bad thing because it does have that screen in the middle so it's size definitely uh the smaller something is the easier it is to transport but definitely take that in, into consideration when if you're going to be getting one of these so with all that said and done i guess there's a big question and i'm sure you guys would want to know Stuart, if you had the choice between this controller and the tyrannus what one would you get and that is a really good question and for me uh or for anybody who's getting into the race side of things. I actually feel like the Tango uh, has a bit of a massive advantage because of this screen and because of how simple it is. It cannot, like, I know that the Free Sky, uh, the Tyrannus right here, can run OpenTX and this this radio can't do any of that sort of stuff. And this is a lot more complex and it's got a lot more options. But if you're just doing some FPV racing, all you really need is something like this. It is so easy to work. It just works straight out of the box. So I've got to say, this thing is going to be giving the Tyrannus a massive run for its money. I love the screen feature. I love how easy it is to set up. I love how you can actually, I really, really love how you can power it from, power your goggles and uh, power your sort of channel selector. You can get the FPV feed straight into your goggles. I love this button right here. It makes setting it up so easy. So uh, yeah, I think uh, if I didn't have to go back and rebind all my models I would have, I would might actually switch over to flying one of these. Uh, you do need to get used to it, I guess, especially if you fly with the thumbs and it is a little bit looser. But if you're a pincher, uh, I think this thing is pretty much made for you. So if you're into pinching, that sounds so weird. If you're into pinching and you're just into FPV racing and you're just about those racing quads that just need like an arm switch, a buzzer, maybe a flight mode switch and one other, this is definitely the radio for you. So uh, I really, really can't wait to see what people are doing with these and if there's any of those improvements in here. If it had a DVR recorder, that would just, that would like pretty much top it off for me. I'm like, yep, I'm going to be using this thing every single time. So there it is. There's my look at the Tango. Uh, hopefully that helps some of you guys out there. And if you're considering getting a radio and all you're going to be doing is FPV racing or just flying some sort of simple quadcopter setups, definitely think about getting this one because it's got some awesome features that uh, I really think a lot, of, a lot of people are going to enjoy. Anyway, uh, subscribe for more FPV related content and as always, happy flying!